Science of Energy, Critical Concepts Video Series, Video 4, The Science and Tissue Effects of Bipolar Energy. This video will cover the history of bipolar energy, basics of electricity and tissue, vessel sealing process with bipolar energy, bipolar device heat profile, and heat management techniques. Bipolar and monopolar devices both use electricity in surgery to heat targeted tissue whereas monopolar energy devices pass electricity through the patient. Bipolar devices pass electricity only between the jaws of the device to heat and coagulate the targeted tissue. The History of Bipolar Energy Bipolar technology has evolved over the last 80 years. Traditional bipolar devices began as a variety of forceps for spot coagulation and sealing small vessels. Along with the heat generated from the electrical current, they required manual compression to seal small vessels. This resulted in vasoconstriction or tissue shrinking, as well as a thrombus formation to seal small vessels up to and including 2 millimeters in diameter. Additionally, a separate cutting tool was required to transect the sealed tissue. By the 1990s, advanced bipolar devices were introduced, which offered improved uniform compression and an integrated cutting mechanism to enable surgical efficiency. Reliable compression enabled effective cell wall coaptation for stronger seals on larger vessels up to 7 mm. By the 2000s, medical device manufacturers of advanced bipolar devices applied adaptive controls or software algorithms in the generators which powered the devices. The device, along with the generator, senses changes in the electrical impedance of the tissue during the sealing cycle and alters the energy output to minimize thermal damage. These contemporary energy systems offer better heat management, reduced thermal damage, and stronger sealing. Basics of Electricity and Tissue Modern electrosurgery generators use the principles of electricity and balance voltage, power, and the resistance encountered from tissue impedance to deliver the desired tissue effect. If electrical current is impeded, it will find an alternate, less resistant path to complete the circuit. In electrosurgery, the most common source of tissue resistance is desiccation, or the loss of moisture when heat is applied. Tissue conductivity is proportional to its water and salt content. Blood is the most conductive, and adipose tissue is the least conductive. This explains why different tissue types may require different amounts of time and energy to achieve the desired tissue effect. Vessel sealing process with bipolar energy. Vessel sealing with energy is a multifactorial and dynamic process. Some factors are under the surgeon's control and others are not. Controllable factors. For all energy devices, the balance of mechanical compression, heat, and time on tissue is critical for effective vessel sealing. Too little or too much of any one variable won't deliver the desired tissue effect. Uncontrollable factors. Biological factors are outside of the surgeon's control. This includes the amount of collagen, elastin, and water present in the tissue, based on tissue type. There are other uncontrollable factors based on patient biology and local tissue conditions which should be considered and accounted for to achieve the desired tissue effect. Bipolar Energy Vessel Sealing Process As previously mentioned, and worth repeating, Bipolar energy devices utilize a balance of compression, heat, and time on tissue to seal vessels. It begins with clamping on a vessel to achieve compression and then applying energy. The current flowing between the jaws of the device heat intracellular water molecules in the tissue and other cellular components. The heat breaks down protein-hydrogen bonds, denaturing proteins, including those essential to create a hemostatic seal, such as collagen and elastin. The increased temperature vaporizes water and other tissue fluids, which produce steam and surgical smoke. This results in a sticky coagulum of denatured proteins. The sticky coagulum, applied compression, and heat applied co-apt the opposing cell walls to form a seal. With many advanced bipolar systems, an audible tone will be heard at the end of the sealing cycle. This notifies the surgeon to stop delivering energy. Then, the surgeon can transect the tissue with the integrated knife blade if they choose to do so. In general, most advanced bipolar systems take 3 to 5 seconds to seal a vessel approximately 5 millimeters in diameter and longer with larger vessels, as is shown in the laparoscopic video. Bipolar Device Heat Profile 
All energy devices intended to coagulate and seal vessels use a form of heat to achieve the desired tissue effect. However, only bipolar devices pass electricity between its jaws to heat the targeted tissue, which is different from monopolar devices that pass electricity through a patient's body, and ultrasonic devices, which use friction to generate heat. As heat vaporizes and reduces the tissue's water content, tissue desiccation impedes the flow of electricity. This resistance causes the electricity to balloon laterally to more conductive tissue, following the path of least resistance. This is referred to as radiated electrical energy. With bipolar devices, heat generation from the electrical current begins in the tissue, which causes the device jaws to become hot. If measured immediately at the end of the sealing cycle, the jaws of the device will be cooler than the tissue. Activating the instrument when not in contact with tissue or fluid will not generate heat. The generated heat extends laterally by a few millimeters. The amount of thermal spread outside of the jaws of the device varies based on several factors, including jaw material, time on the tissue, addition of adaptive algorithms, and surgeon technique. Surgeons should keep both radiated energy and the production of steam in mind while working near critical structures. Heat Management Techniques As previously mentioned, all energy devices use heat to achieve a tissue effect, which also damages the tissue. In general, Irreversible tissue damage occurs quickly above 60 degrees Celsius. Therefore, medical device manufacturers and surgeons use different approaches to minimize the damage to tissue. Energy device manufacturers focus on developing instruments that deliver the right amount of energy for the desired tissue effect. Lessening the impact on tissue reduces the inflammatory response, which may result in less pain and faster healing. To help accomplish this, some energy device manufacturers use algorithms to detect changing tissue conditions and alter energy output to minimize thermal damage. Surgeons interested in managing the heat profile of an energy device should always stop activating the device after hearing a cycle complete tone or visually seeing they've achieved the desired tissue effect. Additionally, surgeons can use any of the following techniques. Grasp tissue that is being removed to cool down the instrument. Dab the end effector of the device on wet gauze or a sponge. Key takeaways. Bipolar devices pass electricity between the jaws of the device to coagulate tissue. No electricity passes through other parts of the patient's body. A balanced combination of heat, compression, and time on tissue provides tissue coagulation and vessel sealing. With bipolar energy, the heat generated from the electrical current starts in the tissue, causing the device to become hot. Without tissue, a bipolar instrument will not generate heat if it is simply activated in the air. As tissue desiccates, the electrical current will be impeded and seek a path of lesser resistance, causing electricity to balloon or radiate outwards from the jaw of the device. Surgeons should keep both radiated energy and the production of steam in mind while working near critical structures. In the next two videos, we will explain monopolar electrosurgery. The first video will cover the basics of the technology and the principles of electricity. The second will discuss best practices and techniques to avoid mistakes.